Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this end of the weekend, Sunday night, October 15th, 2023, 8.30 p.m. California time. Uh, and by the way, member drawing didn't get held today. We will do that tomorrow. Uh, just had a like overwhelming uh, tiredness kick on me today. So just kind of recovering from that. Uh, we do have a 4.8 earthquake coming into the area uh, just off the coast here of the Queen Charlotte Sound area. This is at the northern edge of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. That's a plate boundary that extends uh, from about northern California all the way up into the Queen Charlotte Sound area. That's going to be this region right here. 4.9 earthquake coming in. Uh, looks like just shy of that Cascadia subduction zone. You can kind of see it there on the topography of the map. The canyons right here indicating that uh, subduction zone in the region. Uh, that earthquake did show up here on uh, at least a Mount St. Uh, Mount St. Helens station here. Uh, it's going to be this little uh, seismograph reading right there. Uh, so just kind of watching it. Haven't really seen too much trimmer up there. Let me double check the trimmer and see what we have for a Cascadia trimmer. Only got about 75 epicenters here of trimmer, mostly confined there to the Northern California area. Not a whole lot up here across the uh, Queen Charlotte Sound region, but uh, definitely seen some earthquake activity. Uh, historical data, obviously we do see uh, quite a bit of movement up here. Historical data shows that. Do get some big ones up here as well, between six and seven uh, on the magnitude range. But of course, as a whole, uh, this Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing uh, a 9.1 or greater earthquake in the last one. Uh, in its entirety, was back in uh, 1700, so 323 years or so since the last one kicked up. All right, far as uh, further movement goes, uh, we did have some activity stirring up here into the Southern California area where we did see a handful of quakes this morning, 3.7, uh, 3.3, and a couple other smaller quakes here uh, right around this fault system here. I believe it's a Pine Mountain Fault or one in between these uh, two major ones. Uh, so a little bit of activity stirring up there in Southern California. Since then, well, a handful of smaller quakes around the vicinity of Southern California, including a 1.1. Nothing major uh, going on here across the state for now, but just a little bit of uptick here along the West Coast. And uh, that kind of uh, coincides here with somewhat of quiet conditions out here across the Western Pacific. There's not a whole lot of uh, newer large-scale activity to chat about here in this region. Just a couple fours. Uh, that 5.2 here in Japan is from early this morning. Not a whole lot of renewed uptick though across this area for now. And same goes for this area around the Fiji area and Tonga region. Uh, the last earthquake earlier this evening, a 4.3. Somewhat deep there. Well, actually pretty deep. Almost 500, 500 kilometers deep. That's uh, way down there. Uh, not a whole lot showing up there in New Zealand as far as the USGS map goes, but let's just double check that and see what we have. Uh, really not seeing anything. Some deeper quakes there, it looks like, into the Kermadec Trench. Let's go ahead and pull up the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what we have. 2.3, five hours ago here, North Island. Uh, and then we'll get some older movement quakes here from yesterday. Real quick glance here at the earthquake drums across New Zealand. We'll probably show neutral, calm conditions out here prevailing across this area for now. Handful of smaller quakes, microquakes, so to speak, there, South Island area, but that's expected along a major plate boundary. But for now, nothing major going on there in the uh, beautiful New Zealand area. Uh, 5.3 Iran earlier this morning. For the most part, though, this afternoon and evening have been quiet uh, within this area after... Uh, Quite a bit of earthquake activity here over the past couple weeks or so. Um, let's see, I believe it's a, has it been the last seven days? Let's see here. No, nah, I think we've had a little bit more than that. So I have to go back to the last 30 days. Uh, 4.0 and above. Quite the earthquake activity here across western Afghanistan. A little uncertain as to what's going on here. We don't normally see too much earthquake activity here in this area. Uh, it is away from the major plate boundary, so to speak. Uh, where our, uh, most of the activity occurs here in eastern Afghanistan, uh, up in that region. But a little swarm of big earthquakes out here in the past 30 days. Uh, we've seen four 6.3s now. Uncertain on if this is leading to something major, as far as maybe a larger magnitude in, in the area. 
and continue to watch that. Uh, 29 earthquakes there of uh, large, moderate to large magnitudes in the last couple weeks. Uh, let's see, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Aside from way down south here, we did see uh, 4.8 into the South Sandwich Islands region. 35 kilometers deep there into that subduction zone. Uh, a little bit of movement across the Mediterranean, it looks like, today as well. 4.3 and a four-pointer out here. Uh, let's see exactly where that's at. I don't think the USGS is reporting up on this one. Um, let's go over here to... Uh, World map real quick, see what we got. A little bit of earthquake activity out here today. 3.5 near Italy. Uh, and it looks like a more recent one, northern Italy, seeing a 2.5. Got a 2.4 down there. So uh, some slight movement going on here. It looks like that 4.3 may be a false quake here in the area. Because I'm really not seeing the... Uh, seeing that activity up here. All right, uh, moving on. Let's see what else we got here. There's the Atlantic. Not a whole lot going on. South America, pancakes of uh, earthquakes of various magnitudes, some twos and threes, even a four-pointer in there. Centered mostly around the center area here of the Peru Chile Trench. And a handful of quakes here across the Middle America Trench, it looks like there, uh, off the coast of, uh, let's see what we got here, Nicaragua area, it looks like. El Salvador, this area seen a little bit of uh, movement here today. 46 kilometers deep here into the Middle America Trench region. All right, uh, let's see what we got here for Yellowstone Super Volcano. That's been awfully quiet here in terms of earthquake swarms. Haven't really seen any major earthquake swarms here recently. It's just been a, you know, a day here or there of a little bit of earthquake activity. But far as the large scale events that we've witnessed here in the past, it's just not. Uh, uh, I just don't see it. There's really not a whole lot going on up there across Yellowstone for now. Um, let's check out the inflation up there. Let's see where we're at right right about here. Of course, Yellowstone Caldera is super huge compared to uh, other volcanoes. Uh, this one's old. Let's see what we got. A lot of these look like they are offline or lacking official data well this is 2024 so this looks pretty recent uh but the inflation here remember back in 2007 2008 2009 somewhere around there we've seen a pretty good earthquake swarm along with a um, inflation rate here and that caused a little bit of panic people freaking out uh although that lasted for about a month and a half or so it's died down and we have seen some swarms since then but the general trend right now is deflation here at the Yellowstone area. I'm really not seeing anything major going on there. If we uh, if we did, I, I would definitely be chatting about it. But for now, things are uh, pretty calm there. Big Island of Hawaii, roughly about the same as well for this volcano. Had quite a bit of earthquake activity stirring up about the same time. We've seen movement here across the Izu Trench area. That has just calmed down. There's really not a whole lot going on here. Uh, across the uh, Kilauea volcano for now. Uh, the latest informational statement here from the USGS says that the volcano is currently not erupting and the earthquake and ground deformation rates beneath the southern part of Kilauea's summit caldera and extending to the south southwest have decreased dramatically over the past several days, uh, suggesting that the intrusive event that began last week is coming to an end. But um, that that's just for now. But we'll continue to watch that. Uh, the major intrusive event that has been ongoing beneath the area extending from the south part of Kilauea Caldera southwest to the uh, uh, coast fault zone appear to have slowed significantly or stopped. Uh, we lost the earthquakes, deflation, and whatnot. Um, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, I don't really know 100% if this is going to kick back up again. But for now, earthquake activity and inflation rates have stopped and dropped off dramatically there across the Kilauea volcano. All right, space weather activity. Uh, we are low, talking about low, low, low here on the graph. Look at that. We're below the C flare category right now, down into the B flare, or at least the B category. That is extremely low in terms of solar flare activity. Uh, look at this. Only an 80% chance for C flares. M flare at 20, X flare around 1% chance. And there's there's uh, numerous 
numerous sunspots out here, but as I've said in the past, you could have a thousand sunspots here on the earth facing side of the sun uh, without the complexity, the magnetic structure, um, you know, being intertwined and, and cre creating that, uh, that um, instability. Well, there's not going to be anything that happens. And all of these sunspots here are looking just as that pretty quiet and very stable. There's not a whole lot coming around the eastern limb of the sun, but uh, we'll continue to watch that, though, in the days ahead. We do have these ups and downs in terms of solar uptick and solar quietness. Right now, it's quiet. No major solar storms in the forecast here as far as the auroras go over the next couple days. And therefore, the auroras are pretty much non-existent up there across the areas of the polar regions. All right, what do we got here for uh, the outlook here on the weather? Going to check out the long-term forecast models out here. Of course, we do have quite a bit of cooler temperatures out here along the eastern portions of the country. And out here in the west coast, we are underneath an influence of some high-pressure ridging going on centered over Oregon and Idaho area. That's going to allow our temperatures to creep back up into the low 90s here in Northern California. I'm not too happy about that. Uh, with this ridging going on, we're looking at some cooler air coming down from the north in Canada, across portions of the Great Lakes and uh, into areas around the Midwest. You guys are going to be getting some uh, much cooler temperatures out there. Long-term long -term models. Uh, hard to say exactly what's going to happen way here at the end of October. We'll just have to continue to watch that. Um, let me go to... Let's get back here real quick. This map... Um, look at the rainfall out here, see where this is. Uh, well, I can't really do it right now. We only got four uh, runs here, but the four, the four that we do have, well, it shows, uh, looks like a little bit of coolness coming in for tomorrow, but the high pressure ridging uh, out here along the West Coast, just allowing this low pressure a little bit to come in in Northern California, bring with it a very slim chance of uh, some rain. But uh, it definitely wants to build back in pretty quickly. I'm hoping that changes. Like I say, I don't, I don't like this high pressure out here this time of year. We need, we need some rainfall out here in, in the West Coast, and uh, some cooler temperatures would be nice as well. All right, folks, I am going to jump off here. Still holding steady is a 4.9 up there, northern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone. And um, again, the member drawing was supposed to be held today. Um, I delayed it because, well, I basically had no energy to do anything today. It was just one of those weird days. I don't know if anybody else fell off today, but goodness, it hit me pretty hard. So tomorrow um, we'll get that drawing going uh, for the members. So I think I had a couple of people email me asking how to become a member. Uh, you just got to go to my YouTube channel there and underneath memberships, you'll see the uh, member option there to join the channel. Um, and there's a couple different uh, categories. You don't have to be the top one. You can be on any of the membership levels and um we normally share some videos out there for the members and um extra emojis and perks and whatnot there that go along with it thinking about uh, adding some new stuff onto the members um perks category need some ideas if you got any ideas shoot them to me I, i'm definitely open uh for uh, some suggestions there all right stay safe out there and um be uh be on guard we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime have a good night